Hi everybody, and welcome to this fourth presentation in this track, titled Catching Fishers by Their Bait, Investigating the Dutch Fishing Landscape Through Fishing Kit Detection. My name is Hugo Bijmans, and I work for the Netherlands Organization for Applied Scientific Research, TNO, and I would like to tell you more about our latest research on fishing that I conducted together with my colleagues within TNO and from the University of Delft and Eindhoven. But before I share any of our results, I would like to make clear what the scope of our research is uh, all about. As you probably already know, fishing is still a very widespread phenomenon, but has many different forms, shapes and with different objectives. One could use a targeted phishing attack to gain initial access to a network, uh, but the objective that we are interested in is harvesting online banking credentials purely for monetary gain. And prior research has shown that such phishing attacks are often tailored to a specific audience or country, and we argue that these attacks should therefore be investigated per linguistic or geographical area to create coherent insights and obtain valuable actor TTP. And that's precisely the goal of our research. We want to know how these criminals set up their phishing attacks, how widespread this is, and what law enforcement agencies can do to stop it. And fortunately for us, the Dutch banking sector is ideal for such an in-depth analysis. It's very concentrated, as just three large retail banks and a few smaller ones make up the entire market. Plus, they all primarily service their customers through online banking. And this makes this sector ideal for criminals that want to go fishing. But how would a cyber criminal set up a successful phishing attack on Dutch consumers? Well, let me walk you through the basic steps needed to set up a phishing attack. First, the phisher needs a website that mimics the targeted bank or other organization and is able to lure victims into disclosing their credentials. And one could make this website themselves, but a much easier way to do this is by deploying a so-called phishing kit. These kits contain full-fledged phishing websites with all kinds of functionalities, such as anti-detection mechanisms, live victim manipulation, and options to bypass two-factor authentication defenses. When a kit is obtained, the fisher needs a domain name where the website is located. And here fishers have two choices. They could either hijack an insecure website, which results in no cost for the domain and hosting, but probably more effort. Or they could just buy a new domain themselves, which costs a bit more money, but is very easy to do. And with a new domain name registered, a phishing fisher needs a hosting to store the phishing kit files. And most of them will just rent a small VPS to do this. Then comes an interesting step. According to the Anti-Phishing Working Group, for 78% of all phishing domains, the phisher acquires a TLS certificate to obtain the so-called green padlock icon in the address bar. And although it's not necessary, it doesn't cost any additional money, and it will help to increase the credibility of the domain name, because Dutch consumers are very used to see such a green padlock icon in their address bar when they visit their bank's website. However, as we all know, this Green padlock icon only secures the connection between client and server and is no indication that the website itself is trustworthy. With the website ready, all that's left to do is send out the base. And this can either be done through email, text messages, or WhatsApp. So these are the steps a criminal has to take to set up a phishing campaign. But this is also how we investigated this threat. So let's start with the first step, phishing kits. We found out that Telegram, the Russian chat messaging service, is a very good source to find such phishing kits. There are numerous Telegram channels that offer all kinds of illegal goods, ranging from illegal drugs to weapons to phishing kits. And in the beginning of 2020, we scrolled through many of these Telegram channels to find these shared phishing kits. A day of searching resulted in a collection of 46 different kits, which we analyzed manually. We created fingerprints of parts of the source code and file structure of these kits. Uh, for example, this is an advertisement we found uh, on Telegram, and this kit was later shared in another Telegram group as a zip file, which included all the phishing kit files. And on the right side, you see the fingerprint that we made based on the contents of this zip file. To find possible phishing domains, we leverage the fourth step in the life cycle of a uh, phishing campaign setup, the TLS. Certificate, And we can do this because 78% of all phishing websites are now served over HTTPS. We use the Certificate Transparency Logs project that collects all these uh, certificates and shares newly issued certificates in real time. And we monitored these logs continuously and searched for possible phishy domains. And for every domain that we encountered in these logs, we calculated a score based on the number of features. 
These features are listed on the slide and are uh, like the use of Punicode confusables, suspicious uh, top-level domains, and the mentioning of certain brands for keyboards. And if the score was above a certain threshold, we label this domain as potentially phishing. And we know that this entails uh, that we obtain quite some false positives in this step. But that doesn't matter much because we go one step further. We actively visit the possible phishing domains and capture their attributes. First, we check whether the website was online and reachable, and if so, we visit the website using an automated browser. All resources are then downloaded, such as the HTML, fav icon, and we obtain additional information like who is records and the server IP. Afterwards, we delete false positives by comparing the fav icon of this website with the fav icon of all Dutch banks and targeted organizations. And in this step, we also detect and label default server pages or empty ones. To detect the actual use of phishing kits, we deploy a multi-stage approach, in which we use the fingerprints of the analyzed phishing kits we obtained from Telegram and from open directories on servers. First, we search through the, all the loaded resources on the page. Then, we try to resolve the pages known to be included within the analyzed phishing kits. And finally, we search through the HTML source code of the homepage to find strings matching our fingerprints. And we keep monitoring each website for a maximum of seven days, and we do our analysis when something has changed. So by deploying our tooling, letting it run for four months, and discovering 1,363 phishing domains, we unraveled the following tactics, techniques, and procedures fishers deployed in the, fish, in the Dutch phishing landscape. We discovered that TLDs like .info, .xyz, and .com are the most popular amongst these fishers, and that the Dutch cctld.nl accounted for less than 10% of all domains. More than half of the domains did not refer to a Dutch banking brand and only included commonly other, uh, uh, other words like verification or identification, which means that Commonly used monitoring techniques, looking for brand names in domain registrations, misses quite a significant uh, part of these domains. And a disproportional amount of 73% of the identified domains was registered through Namecheap, which is probably due to the fact that uh, Namecheap accepts Bitcoin payments and is explicitly recommended by certain phishing kit creators in their manuals. Also interesting, the installation times of the phishing kits line up nicely with the Dutch circadian rhythm, so only a few installations during the night, whilst the afternoon is the preferred time to set up a phishing kit. Which might indicate that these fishers are or originating from the Netherlands as well. And if you look at the steps in time of a phishing, uh, of a typical a life cycle of a phishing uh, campaign, we get the following picture. Fishers must act fast, as most domains are online for only a day. So after domain registration, it takes a few hours to get everything uh, up and running on average. The phishing kit is, is installed pretty soon after, and on average, 40 hours after registration, the domain is already offline. If we dive a bit deeper into the phishing kit deployments, we observe that one phishing kit family is particularly popular amongst fishers, and that is Universal Admin, or UAdmin for short. This kit is deployed on more than half of the identified domains that we discovered. And this is an advanced phishing framework with features like live visitor manipulation and supports numerous templates for different banks. Another observation is that only a small portion of websites load their resources externally. So the method of inspecting web server logs for phishing domains requesting their resources will only find a very small number of uh, phishing domains. Plus, more than two thirds of all uh, domains return a blank screen to our crawler to hide themselves from being analyzed. And this means that analysis based on page characteristics like logo identification does not work anymore. Fortunately, our method of active, actively resolving known fingerprints was able to detect these phishing kits successfully. The most important and impactful tactic deployed by fishers nowadays is the use of multi-stage decoy pages. And as you can see in the diagram on the right, fishers have increased their capabilities and options by using these decoy pages. When deploying such pages, a victim is not immediately directed towards a fake login screen of a bank, but receives a message and the corresponding website of another organization first. 
Eventually, only after one or two other pages, the victim is directed towards a fake login screen of a bank. And this massively increases the number of involved organizations and became increasingly popular during the corona pandemic with postal delivery services being a prime target for this. Finally, we benchmarked our results with data from the APWG eCrime Exchange. And this resulted in only 77 overlapping domains, meaning that we discovered almost 1300 domains not listed in our database. And within the overlapping set, our discoveries were just over 11 hours earlier on average. So in this presentation and in our paper, we presented a novel methodology of identifying and analyzing phishing domains to obtain in-depth knowledge about a phishing landscape. Our methods enabled us to identify a new realm of domains and did that faster, making it possible to intervene on such domains before the first victims arrive. We discovered that fishers have increased their capabilities and their options to fish with new narratives by deploying decoy pages, which extends their attack surface massively. A new admin is a very popular framework to build phishing websites upon, and not only within the Dutch phishing landscape. Because the creator of this framework has been arrested by the Ukrainian police in February this year, after the Australian police stated that more than half of the phishing attacks in their country was done through you admin. Our methodology and obtained knowledge can assist law enforcement agencies all over the world to improve their anti-phishing efforts, and we encourage them to do a similar analysis of their local phishing landscape. And with these words, I would like to end this presentation and thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please let me know. And don't hesitate to contact me or my team. The email address is on the slide.